not worry about what's going to happen in the future because we can't predict it, right? Our student just disappeared in a heartbeat, gone. You don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. So stop thinking about it. Stop trying to plan it. I'm Adrian Lars, and you're watching the Standout Online Show. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Standout Online Show. Today, I've got an incredible guest. I've got Eric Ho. He is an international speaker, author, philanthropist. Some people even call him the millionaire monk. And Eric's going to be sharing how he built a multi-million pound in business empire in a very spiritual way. Sounds pretty cool, right? Hey, Eric, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Luke. So, what is a millionaire monk? <laughs> a millionaire monk. <laughs> um, I think if, if we put it quite simply, right, you have like two types of people I see in this world. Right now, spirituality is becoming more and more popular. So everybody's always posting these yoga pictures, meditation pictures on Instagram and everywhere. And, and then you have the people who are like kind of like stuck in the hustle. So you got these two types, the, the doers and the beers, I call them. So um, I believe and i've been living for the last few years of my life where two of these worlds coincide where it's not like because you, you have one side which is like make money make money make money looking at the spiritual people practicing yoga and saying you guys are crazy you know what's what's wrong with you you know bare feet standing on grass you think that's going to pay your bills you know go out and get a job and then you have the spiritual people who are looking at the other side of the spectrum and saying you guys don't don't understand what life is about you know, you're doing every single day, but you haven't even started living yet. But I believe in today's world, it's how can you take spirituality to modern day spirituality, apply the teachings from so many millions of years ago, and actually apply it in today's world where you can actually generate income, make money, build businesses, serve people, help people, and change lives at the same time. And I guess that's how the whole millionaire monk came along. Yeah, I've seen it at some of your events as well. You know, a lot of the very spiritual people, they have this perception that money is bad, that you can't be spiritual and have a nice watch or a nice but, but car the or a but nice the problem, house. But the problem is the same people are struggling to pay the bills. That, that's what I found. A lot of spiritual people coming to my events, like if we rewind, let's say just four years ago, I was running events not on spirituality, purely on business. And I have so many people who are spiritual people coming to ask for help in terms of how to make money. But then the biggest problem I seen was then when I give them the strategies, I say, go out and practice the strategies. They're like, oh, okay, I'll do it after my meditation. And every day they'll be meditating. They won't be doing anything. And they'll be like, well, this is going to be very hard. You know, you need to understand these two things, yin and yang, when you make it work together. It's a very powerful force. I've seen you talking a lot about this on your YouTube channel. Guys, you need to follow Eric's YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, Eric Ho Official. Eric Ho Official. Check it out. He makes loads of cool videos about law of attraction and manifestation and all these really, really epic things. So definitely go and subscribe to his channel. I've seen you talking about something a lot lately, this law of attraction. And I love this, but what does that mean to you? Law of attraction is, is not a choice. It's not something where somebody says, I believe in the law of attraction or I'm going to practice the law of attraction, then it's working. The laws of attraction are working all the time. For every single person, every single person who's viewing this, this video right now in exactly the same way. It's, you know, when, when we have negative things come into our life, we're attracting it. We've said something, we've thought something, we've put something out there on a certain vibration for these things to happen. And if it's positive, in exactly the same way. And actually, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of physics behind this, understanding that if everything is energy and everything is vibration, then surely these vibrations, they have a way to connect and attract, you know? So it's, it's happening regardless. But it's just when you become aware of the science behind it, then you can actually use it to your advantage. And so I think law of, law of attraction is literally you put positive vibration out there, you, you know, receive positivity. You put negative out there, you get negative. And people don't realize they are creating everything, the whole reality around them. What's been the biggest shift you've seen in your life since you've come into this more spiritual path and started, you know, practicing these principles? <laughs> life gets easier. <laughs> life gets, life gets so much easier. It's like, like, 
there's a saying saying you don't know what you don't know and most people are just unaware right that's why we always talk about the shift of consciousness now people just don't know how things work they don't realize that every single thing in their life so far they've been attracting themselves they've been creating and once you come to that realization and you are able to become more aware and see everything then you can see all the pieces come together and then you can create anything you want right just to give you a real real crazy example i started my youtube channel like literally three months ago i i built a big facebook following uh, hundreds of thousands of people then i decided hey why not try on youtube so when i put out the YouTube channel, I found this channel which had over a million subscribers, like two million subscribers. So I said, hey, let's just model them. I took the banner, right, of this couple and I put it onto our banner. I copied the exact same banner, right? Three months later, uh, just two days ago, I was sitting in LA, uh, me and Kaina, we we're having lunch and then next to us was sat this couple. And I was like, that is crazy out of the millions, out of the billions of people, the whole population. And I could be anywhere. My first time out in LA, I sit having lunch and I see the couple who are on the banner. So we go over, we get a video and we get a photo, right? These, you can create anything you want. You want to create a million dollar empire. You want to, you want to be able to make more money. You want to have that freedom, whatever it is you want right now. If you know how to, in the right way, right? Think about it. To set off those vibrations, to tap into the source, you're able to manifest anything you want in your life. And it's instant. And a lot of people notice these kind of things and they call them coincidences, mm -hmm. but I prefer to call them synchronicities. Mm -hmm. And I found the more connected I am, the more these kind of things happen. And it just, they're too crazy. The odds are too crazy for it to be chance. What's your views on coincidence? Do you think anything happens by chance? Um, well, it's quite funny you say that because the word coincidence comes from the word coincide. It's a mathematical term saying two, two shapes should coincide, should be together. And so there is no coincidence. It's supposed to be, you know, everything is supposed to be. Everything is created. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And I know a lot of people who will be watching videos like this won't like the sound of that, especially when they're thinking of people in those dire situations where they are victims right now. But if you, we could actually come to this realization and this awareness and this consciousness that actually we are creating everything, it means that there are no victims, which a lot of people won't, won't like. You know, a lot of people would like to fight and comment and hate this, this type of, you know, somebody who believes in that because you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. But once you come to the realization of, hey, actually, we do, we create everything, then you can take charge of your life. So just to get real for a moment, there's a lot of people out there who don't like their life right now. They're not happy with their circumstances. And you're telling them that they have created this. What can people do to shift things? I think before we even talk about shifting things, I was in LA with a big yogi master. His name's Sadhguru, you may have heard of him. Um, he was saying this from stage and I thought it was the, I thought it was one of the best teachings. He said that there's a lot of people who say they don't enjoy life. Then he says, so why are they living? He said, you, people say they don't enjoy life. They say, well, you know, you can take your life away in an instant. Why are you living? There is some part of life that actually, there's, there's, there's an addiction to wanting something to continue or that, or striving towards something that keeps them alive. Otherwise they would have took their life away already. So I think it's understanding that, hey, first of all, there's no such thing as not, not enjoying your life because we can't just take it away. You don't enjoy it, take it away, don't complain. But if you can't take it away, there's something you're addicted to in life, right? And what most people don't realize is this. Imagine if we didn't have any problems in this world. We didn't have any challenges, right? And we didn't have any suspense. We didn't have any, let's say, curiosity. Um, or, or, or if we knew exactly what was going to happen the next moment, what life would be like, like if that was the case. So give an example of watching a movie, right? When you're watching a movie, do you 
do you like to know the whole sequence of the movie before watching it, yes or no? Not really. No. Okay, so you don't, you don't like that, right? When, what, what gets you hooked in a movie? When do you say, oh, that was a good movie? It's when you don't know what's going to happen the next moment. You don't know what's going to ha happen the next moment. And it gets right to the end, and then it cracks the code at the end, and, it, and you're like, whoa, that was a good movie. That's when you tell everybody about it, right? But that's exactly the same as life. So when we have those challenges, when we can't predict the next moment, we're actually enjoying it on, on, some, on some sense, on some level. But when we know the whole thing, we're not enjoying it. And so actually, it's about understanding how can we enjoy through the pain, through the challenges, through these times now. And when we can live that, then maybe we talk about shifting to uh, another level of awareness. I think a lot of people somewhere, I don't know, watching Disney movies or something, they get this expectation that life is supposed to be rosy and that you're never supposed to feel any negative emotions and there's no, there's never going to be downtime, especially when people start businesses, you know, they think I'm going to start a business and I'm going to just take over the world and they don't realize that being an entrepreneur is one of the hardest and most crazy journeys you can possibly go on. Like, how can we reassert people's expectations about life? I, I love what you said there. Have you got some advice for people who maybe don't understand quite what being an entrepreneur is. Drop the expectations, enjoy the journey. I think that's as simple as it, it can be, you know? Have no expectations. Um, if you don't have expectations, you'll never have disappointment. So what does that mean? It means that, I'm not saying to drop your goals. You have your vision, you have your goals. And then once you've set that intention, that goal, that vision, what do you do? Just enjoy every moment of it. And when you enjoy every moment of it, what you'll find is you'll hit those targets, you'll hit those goals in no time, right? It's, it's like if you're running a marathon and you keep thinking how many miles you've got left, you're gonna be really tired thinking about it. You wanna quit all the time. But if you're running a marathon and you're just like enjoying the moment of it and you're just like, just running for this moment, not running to try and get to the end, you're just running for this moment. And then what happens is the hours pass by, you're at the, at the finish line and you're like, oh, I've done it, I've made it. That's the same thing with life. So I think the key really is this. If you decide that you want to create this lifestyle for yourself, you want to go into, that, uh, go into entrepreneurship, right? You need to know there will be challenges, right? And the challenges, the bigger the empire you want to create, the bigger the challenges will be. But enjoy the thrill of that challenge and understand that every, every single time there's a challenge and you overcome a bigger challenge, you become a bigger version of yourself, right? So I actually get, I get a buzz. I get, I get a thrill whenever I see a challenge. And I'm like, okay, bring it on, you know, bring this new thing on. And I feel it. Yes, I do. And at times, does it get a little bit stressful? Of course it does. But we know that, hey, every problem, there's always a solution. So can we be solution focused enough to stay in line with that and actually overcome those challenges? And if you can do that, you're going to get very far in life, you know? We talked about being in the present moment. And I remember you said something to me one of the first times we met and you asked me to take a deep breath in and out. And you said, right now, in this moment, everything is beautiful. There's nothing that you need. There's no problems. And if you can just live life in the present moment, you'll be so much happier. And I remembered when I heard that, something inside me just went, Phew. like, it was a big awakening for me. No one had told me that before. What's your advice for people about how they can be more present, be more focused on the moment rather than all the other crap? <laughs> I think, I think the, the most I can say here is just breathe. You know, it, it's my, my master from India who taught me this. He said, breathing is everything. And I remember four years ago when I heard that, I thought I understood. Even till today, I get more of a realization every time I breathe. It is life. It's the first thing we do when we come into this world. It's the last thing we do before we leave this world. If we understand, even it doesn't matter what the situation, what the problem, what the challenge people are facing right now, the moment they can take a deep breath in and out, that has to have settled even just a little bit. And if it's settled that little bit, all you need to do to settle it some more, take a deep breath in again, and out. And it'll settle again. 
every time we breathe, we bring ourselves, we draw our attention back into this moment. And in these moments, what do we do? Look around us. Be grateful that, hey, I'm alive, you know? It's like, this is so cool. I'm still alive. I've, I'm like, you know, I, I had one of my, um, one of my students um, yesterday uh, passed away. Um, she, she was a real superstar, you know, came to, uh, she, was, she was on our speaking program and she just got a heart attack yesterday and she just disappeared. I think people don't, um, they take life for granted. We need to understand that, hey, if we can see ourselves still moving right now, we need to be super grateful for everything we have in this moment. And then it actually loops onto something else, which Sean Aker calls the, the happiness advantage or the positive advantage. If we can be grateful in every moment of our being and just being alive, we vibrate at a higher frequency because we're more positive. And when we're more positive, we end up attracting more positive things in our life, right? And some people will find it hard to understand, hey, attraction, law of attraction, how does it work? It's very simple. If we look at it in very logical terms, if you're happy, if you're grateful, you go out there, you smile at someone, someone smiles back. What you put out, you always get back. If we understand on the very, very basic level, just having more smiles, that's going to help as well, you know? And that takes everything forward. It takes your business, it takes your career. It goes much further than you can even imagine. Imagine if you just like, you're just happy, you just walk out there, you're smiling, you're positive, right? Let's say there's an investor out there. There's another business person out there for collaboration. They're more aligned with that and more want to approach you and speak to you. If you're frowning, stressing, and all this frustration, you're going to attract the other shit out there, you know? And that's, that's, that's the big problem. People are just attracting more of it. And so I think in times where they feel stressful, look around them. Be grateful for everything you have, right? Then don't focus on the stress. Don't focus on the negativity. Focus on the positivity. Focus on, ask yourself the question, what can I do right now to solve this? Right now. Not worry about what's going to happen in the future because we can't predict it, right? Our student just disappeared in a heartbeat, gone. You don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. So stop thinking about it. Stop trying to plan it. And stop stressing about something that happened before. Just be in every moment. Live in every moment. Find something that you can do that's effective, that's productive in every moment, and that's what creates your future. Something you are really good at is getting yourself out there and attracting opportunities. And I see you as someone, the first time I saw you speak, you were different to any other speaker I'd seen. You know, a lot of speakers, they didn't have your level of like centeredness and that balance. And that really made you stand out to me. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, I want to get to know this guy. This is called the Stand Out Online Show. So we teach people how to stand out. What does that really mean to you? And how do you think people can stand out more? Well, firstly, I believe that every single person is put into this world, is on this planet for a reason. Meaning they have a message within them. Everybody does. And I believe our duty is to actually serve the greater good, serve the rest of the community, the rest of the population with that message. But it just so happens that through society, through upbringing, there's been certain rules, certain things put in place that has actually set these boundaries and told us to sit and be quiet, you know, through school. And I believe everybody has this message, so it's our, our duty to actually stand out. In today's world, standing out, what does it mean? It means find your message. Once you have that core message, and it's quite funny you say, hey, when you heard me speak, it was different to the speakers. It's when you find your authentic self, your core message deep down inside. To be able to do that, you need to tune out. You need to be able to calm that mind and really tap into the source. And when you're able to do that, today standing out is all online. At a click of a button, you have to, you have to, Get active on Facebook, get active on YouTube, get active on Instagram, 
all the biggest influencers are there today. A lot of people are, you know, anti-social media. I'm just thinking, man, in today's day and age, we need to think, understand everything is evolving. People are too spiritual for that stuff. And I'm just thinking, this is all part of spiritual. Everything is spirituality. You know, people believe in God and, you know, but if you talk about God creating everything, God created social media and God created Facebook, you know, this is a platform for us to shout out, like get our message out there. Once we're able to really get out there and just, just be brave, be daring, don't be scared. Don't live in that comfort zone. Be scared of other people's opinions. And if we shout it out there, we'll find that we, the more value we put out there and the more we go out serving, serving the world, right? The more we'll get back as well in return. What's something like very practically that anyone can do to really stand out? Like what would your thing be that you are absolutely loving at the moment that's working really well for you? Okay. <laughs> What they can, what everybody, um, what is practical and one simple step. And everybody could do it, but not everybody will do it. Is that okay for you? Mm -hmm. Of course. Get out of the comfort zone. Stop doing the same old shit. <laughs> it's like, they can't, then the people aren't daring enough. That's the problem. It's like, you gotta see things. It scares you. You fear it. You fear other people's judgment. You fear what's gonna happen. You fear the outcome. You don't know if you're gonna take, I took a 460,000 pound loan for my first business at the age of 21. I borrowed from five banks, swiped three credit cards to make this happen. People look at me today, they say, you got lucky. I say, ha, <laughs> I got lucky? <laughs> I say, you show me lucky. How does lucky work, right? Go out there, get yourself out of your comfort zone. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. Go out there, swipe your cards, take the loans, set up whatever business. Stop saying that I want to set up a business. I want to build something. Build it, do it. They say, oh, but I don't have the money. Go and pitch for the money, go and find the money. Go and find a way. It's just like people have so many excuses, you know? And I think, just cut the excuses. No excuses are allowed. You wanna do something, go out and get it, period, that's it. Amazing. Eric, you have talked about something a few times in this interview. That I just want to go into a little bit deeper because some people watching might not understand what you mean. You talk about plugging into source mm. and some people will know what that means. I do that all the time. But mm. what does that mean for anyone out there who isn't aware of how you plug into source? Okay, so source being our creator. Let's, let's, let's just put it that way because I think everyone can connect with that. So let's not talk anything too crazy right now. We all have a creator. Some refer to as God, some refer to as the universe, some refer it to like uh, the Big Bang, science, let's call it that, that's cool too. But we can't deny that there's this magical experience and this magical thing that occurred that created you, me and everything around us. And if we, we can't deny this thing exists. So if this intelligence, this thing exists out there, then who are we to say there's nothing out there, right? So there is definitely something out there. The more, and I think it starts from breathing, the more we're able to breathe, bring ourselves in these moments of silence, we're able to more feel that, what we call intuition. Some people call gut feeling or I like to call God feeling. We all feel it. And if we can always start to listen and tune into, that's what I call source, right? Because there's, there's two parts to our decision-making. A lot of the time when we're faced with, hey, shall I go left or shall I go right? Shall I take this or shall I take that, right? There's only two things that's playing up. Number one is your logical mind, but your logical mind isn't your logical mind because your logical mind is somebody else's logical mind who programmed you through your upbringing and made it your logical mind. So you think it's your logical mind, but your logical mind is not so logical. That's number one. So other people's mind, that's number one. The second thing is you have this feeling, you have this desire, it just feels right. I can't explain it, the maths don't work out, it's non-logical, but I just really wanna do it. And let me tell you something, most people, they still go for it. 
but they can't explain where does that come from? You say one comes from your mind, where does your intuition come from? That, when you get connected with that thing and you learn to trust, get rid of that logic mind and learn to trust and continue trusting, it unfolds and it opens up a whole new world to you. That is your destiny. Awesome, love it. I would love to talk to you for hours, but unfortunately we are getting towards the end of the show. So thank you so much, Eric. Thank Everyone you. follow Eric on YouTube. It's Eric Ho official. Follow him on Facebook, he's on all social medias. Absolutely amazing guy. And before I let you go, I just wanna ask you one more question. If there is one thing that you can leave the audience with, that if they take this thing and they actually do it, it can have the big, massive impact in their life. What would your one thing be? Take themselves out of context. Do something they've never done before. Do something that scares them. Can you explain that? People might not know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take myself out of context. What does that mean? Just they have to do something that scares them. What I said before, I think it's just they have to get out of their comfort zone. They have to just when they feel for something, they got to do it. Even if they fear, act in spite of fear. When they do, then all the doors will open to a whole new world. And that's the best way to shift their consciousness. And that's their best way to tap into the source. And that's also their best way to hit the goals that they want to hit because the magic that they desire for, that they want right now, is outside of their comfort zone. So if you didn't get the message, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Do it now. Figure out something that scares you and do it. If you do something that scares you every day, just one thing every day, think about in a year, you've done 365 things that scare you. You will be afraid of nothing. Like you will be fearless and then you can get anything that you want. Eric, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. And thank you all for watching. Tune in to the next episode of the Standout Online Show. We're going to be bringing you more of the world's top entrepreneurs, thought leaders, people that really stand out so they can help you get more from your life, from your business, from whatever it is that you want.